Do you like benefits? Of course you do. Who doesn't? Over the years, many have complained to me, if all are saved, then there's absolutely no benefit to believing in this life. It goes something like this. So what you're telling me is even though I believed, I, not you, I have believed in Jesus for 31 and a ha half years, that someone who never believed in him then died is going to end up just like me? We're all going to live happily ever after with God? God? Right? And everyone's going to be immortal? Right? So if we're all going to end up the same, why even believe then, huh? Why not just do what we're going to do? Do what we want to do. Why not just go f***ing nuts? It's all the same thing. No matter what you do, let's just go f***ing crazy. Let's go f*** everything, huh? <laughs> you know, f*** everything that just walks right on by. Our neighbor's f***ing wife. Let's just rob every bank and every f***ing old lady in town. Let's drown our sorrows in a gallon of Jack f***ing Daniels. If all are saved, I just f***ing wasted my f***ing for nothing. When this objection is raised, the objector is oblivious to the fact that Jesus told a parable rebuking this kind of attitude towards God's goodness. In Matthew 20, 1 through 16, Jesus told the parable of the man who hired workers for his vineyard. He hired five different times throughout the day and some of the workers worked the full day, and some worked only the last hour of the day. But in the end, the man gave the workers all the same wage, to the great disappointment of those that worked all day and longer in the day than those that worked just the last hour. Here's the final showdown of that parable. Matthew 20, 11 through 15 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. Now, getting their payment, they murmured against the householder, saying, These last do one hour, and you make them equal to us, who bear the burden of the day and the scorching heat. Yet he, answering one of them, said, Comrade, I am not injuring you. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Pick up what is yours and go away. Now I want to give to the last one, even as to you. Is it not allowed me to do what I want with that which is mine? Or is your eye wicked, seeing that I am good. Here's a word of advice for anyone that would try to use this type of argument against God saving all. Stop it! You look like a fool trying to turn something good that God is doing into something evil. The fact that God and Christ save all does not injure you or anyone else in any way. And it makes you come across as though you earned your salvation. You didn't. Nobody earns salvation. Jesus earned our salvation by his work. You have absolutely nothing to do with your salvation or anyone else's salvation. So what you get is a free gift just as much as what anyone else gets, including the likes of Hitler or your worst enemy. If you think it's bad for God to save all, please tell me why in the comments below. And please use scripture in your argument. Here's the big truth of God for all. All will have immortal and incorruptible life. In essence, we will all have everlasting life because of this. Christ died for your sins. He was entombed. He was roused the third day. Even though all will have everlasting, immortal, and incorruptible life, there are great benefits for believing Jesus now in this life. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Timothy 4, 9-10, Faithful is the saying, and worthy of all welcome. For for this we are toiling and being reproached, that we rely on the living God, who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. We see very clearly that God is the Savior of all mankind. But there is a special salvation, especially of believers, those that believe in this life. John twenty twenty nine. Now Jesus is saying to Thomas, Seeing that you have seen me, you have believed. Happy are those who are not perceiving and believe. Obviously, Thomas was very happy that he had seen Jesus and believed. But Jesus says, happy are those who are not perceiving and believe. 
This is a happiness above and beyond those that see and believe. So there is a special elevated happiness for those who believe in Jesus in this life without perceiving him. The vast majority in humanity will not come to believe by faith in this life. The vast majority will be like Thomas. They will come to believe by sight, not by faith. Those who believe in this life, the chosen or the elect, will receive benefits that the non-elect will not receive or will receive much later than the elect who believe in this life. Five benefits for believing Jesus now. Benefit number one, early immortality and incorruption. Christ is currently the only man enjoying immortality and incorruption. The rest of us will follow him in order and in our own class. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 through 24. For even as in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vivified, yet each in his own class. The first fruit Christ, thereupon those who are Christ's in his presence, thereafter the consummation, whenever he may be giving up the kingdom to his God and Father, whenever he should be nullifying all sovereignty and all authority and power. We see the three classes, the first fruit Christ, thereupon those who are Christ's in his presence, thereafter the consummation. This is speaking of the consummation of the eons. The Aeonian Times chart will help us to visualize the three classes of vivification. The earliest immortality of Christ, the next early immortality of those who will be vivified in his presence, and the final immortality or vivification of those at the end of the eons. Here we have Christ's death and resurrection, and we can see from that point on he has immortality and incorruption. In essence, he has everlasting life. Then we have two future vivifications, one here at the return of Christ, so those will be immortalized and vivified in his his presence they will have immortality and incorruption in essence everlasting life and then two complete eons later the rest of mankind will be vivified made immortal and incorruptible and in essence have everlasting life thus Christ those who will be vivified in his presence and those vivified at the end of the eons will all have everlasting life. The benefit for those who believe in this life is they will have immortality and incorruption and enjoy Aeonian life through eons four and five, far ahead of the rest of humanity who do not believe in this life. Benefit number two, ruling and reigning with Christ. I have about this much desire to have a government job, but ruling and reigning with Christ, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, will be the bomb, the good kind of bomb. 2 Timothy 2, 11 through 13, the Apostle Paul writes, Faithful is the saying, for if we died together, we shall be living together also. If we are enduring, we shall be reigning together also. If we are disowning, he also will be disowning us. If we are disbelieving, he is remaining faithful. He cannot disown himself. This is a blessing even beyond those who believe in this life, those who believe and endure in this life. Verse 12, if we are enduring, we shall be reigning together also. Those who endure under suffering and remain faithful to Christ in this life will be reigning with him. Those who do not endure and suffer with him are still saved. They will just not have the extra blessing of reigning together with him. 1 Corinthians 6, 2-3, from the Apostle Paul. Or are you not aware that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world is being judged by you, are you unworthy of the least tribunals? Are you not aware that we shall be judging messengers or angels, not to mention life's affairs? Those who believe in this life will judge the world. They will even be judging in the celestials, judging messengers in the affairs of the celestial realm. Benefit number three, no judgment or indignation. The day of God's righteous indignation and his just judgment will come upon the earth. Not only the earth, but the entire cosmos, the entire creation. Romans 2, 5 through 6. Yet in accord with your hardness and unrepentant heart, you are hoarding for yourself indignation in the day of indignation and revelation of the just judgment of God, who will be paying each one in accord with his acts. This is speaking of the great white throne judgment, which judgment will come in God's 
time. It will be a day of indignation, and there will be a judgment from God that will be just. Will you escape it? One benefit for belief in this life is escaping that coming indignation and judgment. John 5, 24 and 28 through 29 Jesus speaking, Verily, verily, I am saying to you that he who is hearing my word and believing him who sends me has life eonian and is not coming into judging, but is proceeded out of death into life. Verse 28. Marvel not at this, for coming is the hour in which all who are in the tombs shall hear his voice, and those who do good shall go out into a resurrection of life, yet those who commit bad things into a resurrection of judging. Here we see in verse 24 that those who hear and believe Jesus are not coming in to judging, but have proceeded out of death into life. And in verse 29, those who believe in this life and die are resurrected to a resurrection of life. Yet those who do not believe in this life will be resurrected into a resurrection of judging. Those who believe in this life will not come in to judging. Romans 5, 9, much rather than being now justified in his blood, we shall be saved from indignation through him. And 1 Thessalonians 1.10 Be waiting for his Son out of the heavens, whom he rouses from among the dead, Jesus our Rescuer out of the coming indignation. Christ is our Savior, not only from sin and death, but for those who believe in this life, he will save them from the coming indignation of God. Benefit number four, you are the body of Christ. Christ is building his body and the members are those who are the elect or the chosen, those who believe in this life. Now once he returns for his body, those that believe in the pure grace message that was given by the Apostle Paul, then his body will be complete. For those who believe in this life, we can be a part, and we are a part, of his body. Where he goes, we go. He rules in the celestials, we will rule in the celestials. He is our head, we are his body. And that is one of the greatest privileges of all time being that close with Christ a member of his body first Corinthians 12 verse 18 and 27 yet now God placed the members each one of them in the body according as he wills verse 27 now you are the body of Christ and members of a part those who believe in the pure grace message from the Apostle Paul are members of Christ's body Colossians 3 3 through 4 for you died, and your life is hid together with Christ in God. Whenever Christ, our life, should be manifested, then you also shall be manifested together with him in glory. As I said, wherever our head, Christ, goes, we go. When he is manifested, we shall be manifested also together with him in glory as his body. This is one awesome benefit. Benefit number five, early release from stubbornness shown early mercy. Do you know that God has locked all humanity in a prison of stubbornness? And because of that stubbornness, God's indignation is remaining on those who do not believe. John 3:36. He who is believing in the Son has life eonian, yet he who is stubborn as to the Son shall not be seeing life, but the indignation of God is remaining on him. Here we see believing in the Son contrasted with stubbornness as to the Son. Those who are stubborn as to the Son have been locked into this prison of stubbornness by God himself, as we will see shortly. But those who believe in this life have life eonian. They've been released from stubbornness and have been shown mercy. All will eventually be released from stubbornness and shown mercy, but we who believe in this life receive it early much earlier than the rest. One of the most powerful verses in all of Scripture, Romans 11:32. For God locks up all together in stubbornness, that he should be merciful to all. All have been locked into stubbornness. All will be shown mercy by God. We who believe in this life will be released from the prison of stubbornness early, and we will be shown mercy early. All of this is by the pure grace of God. If we come in early, it is by no merit of our own. It is God's sovereign decision to choose who will believe now in this life by faith. So yes, Mr. Sheephead and the rest of you doubters, there are tremendous benefits for believing in Jesus now in this life. And I would encourage you to believe in him now. And there are many more benefits for those who believe in this life. I encourage you to search the scriptures to know God's will. 
to understand what God has done, not only for all of humanity, but for the chosen, the elect, those that believe in this life. God loves you, and God has a plan for you. Whether you believe in this life, or whether you come to believe in Jesus later, He loves you. I suggest you watch this video next.